Oh no, Chewbacca shifted out of the way. And look what was behind him. The amber check engine light. You know what that means? Break out another kilobuck. We gotta bring her into the stealer ship. And really, until I found out what that actually meant, it was super scary to me. I mean, look at it. It, it looks like it's gonna auto destruct imminently. You're. You now have 15 minutes to reach minimum safe distance. You're gonna have to buy a new car. I mean, obviously. Then I got to thinking about it and. Actually, every taxi cab I've ever been in, in the history of taxi cabs, has always had that light on. And they don't seem to be blowing up. What gives? What that light actually means is that one of the modules, or computer, or sensor in the car has detected a little fault. It could be a glitch fault, could be a bad connection, could be something serious, but we don't know until we check. And the great thing about that is it's a standard. It's an OBD2 standard, onboard diagnostic standard. And that standard came in largely by the impetus of California, because they were having lots of smog issues. If you've ever been to that hellhole called Los Angeles, you'll know what I'm talking about. So they wanted a quick and easy way to get big time polluters off the road. And the quick and easy way to do that is for a technician to plug in a confuser and read the codes and see if there's anything wrong with the emission system that way they can force the owner to go and get it fixed now I'm not a big government guy but I am quite pleased that we don't get all the government that we pay for luckily but that system actually worked if you look at Los Angeles from the early 80s to now there's a huge difference in the amount of that greasy looking orange oxide nitrous oxide haze and that's a direct link with actually looking at what vehicles are doing and getting the worst ones off the road. Now the problem is people don't educate themselves as to what that actually means. And what that absolutely does not mean is that you have to rush into the dealership because the transducer in the seat detected that your wallet was getting a little fat. And I say dealership not because they're all crooks, but because they're all fucking crooks. Well, I'll give you the tour, I guess. So now we're gonna get right into the meat of her and I'm going to show you how to avoid airing out those moths in your wallet by investing your hard-earned $30 in one of these OBD2 CAN bus readers. Now the beauty thing about this is that as I said, OBD2 is a standard. Comes with a standard pinout and comes with standard codes. If any sensors or any modules or anything at all has a glitch, it's going to pick it up on the onboard computer in your car and it's going to flash this idiot light at you. So that idiot light, all it means is that there is a stored code, potentially active, potentially not active, in the computer. If you're absolutely certain of what it is, you can go ahead and remove the battery terminal off your car and that will clear that but the code will st still be in the computer however that's really a false economy if you don't know what the problem is because you don't want to be driving around second guessing whether or not something's gonna blow up on you nine times out of ten it's a stupid little nuisance fault it's nothing you clear the code and it goes away forever okay so first thing you do is you go on Google Google is your friend in case you didn't know already and you find out where the OBD2 port is on your vehicle now on this vehicle it's down here nice and convenient then all we got to do is go birds and the bees we stick the pokey bit in the pokey bit receiver if you're not familiar with that procedure you're gonna want to talk to your dad and not to worry everybody's first time is scary it's dark, you're all alone. There we go, easy as that. Okay, we have power on the CAN port, that OBD2 port, but the ignition is not on. I'm gonna turn on the ignition without starting the vehicle. Now we're gonna to refer to the manual because each one of these readers is different. So we hit enter, it's going to scan. Pulse width modulated, CAN, reading, it's chooching away here. There we go, happy as a little clam. Showing us menu, one DTC. It's diagnostic trouble codes. We are going to select that by pressing enter. We can see, fault one, pending one. And we can see the code is a P0126. 
because that OBD2 is a standard, that code P0126 will be the same code for all vehicles. So we just look in the book for that code. And there's a whole nomenclature to these, uh, you know, one, and yeah, anyway, we won't get into that. Just look it up in the book. Okay, so we have here insufficient coolant temperature for stable operation. Okay, so what I would do now is just check to make sure there's coolant in it. Simple thing, right? But just get back on the Google, put in your make and model number, put in that code, and see what it says for troubleshooting. Now, we'll clear the code and see if it comes back. If it comes back, it's definitely not a nuisance fault. If it doesn't come back, quite possibly it is a nuisance fault or a wonky connection or something, something that comes and goes if it gets wet or whatever. Okay, so this is interesting here. The second instance is a pending code. That means it's live right at this very moment. So it could very well be a loose connection or something. But we'll go ahead and clear the codes and see what happens. Okay, so now we're back at the main menu. And we'll just scroll down to erase. We'll go enter, erase, yes. Erase, done. There we go. Simple as that. Now what we can go ahead and do, pull the key out of the ignition. We'll retract our pokey bit. Okay, now let's see if the code comes back. Okay, code cleared. Now by no means do I want you to ignore the idiot lights on here. They do mean something. But it's important for you to be informed about what it is. And Google is an excellent resource. The dealership system in North America is completely broken and completely morally bankrupt. Terrible, terrible the way they've got it set up. You need to take it upon yourself in order to protect yourself because nobody else is gonna do it for you. So for 30 bucks, I consider this little gadget money well invested. Now we know what the fault was in the computer. We can monitor it to see if it was a nuisance fault or an actual problem. And we're not gonna have any dealership mechanics trying to throw parts at it and liberating us of our hard earned cash. Now that you know what the problem is, do some research online and figure out if you wanna do the work yourself or if you wanna bring it into a, a small neighborhood mechanic, mom and pop shop, somebody is not gonna rip you off who you trust. If you do end up taking your car to a mechanic, do not tell him what you think the problem is because he is going to do exactly what you say and charge you for it, and it could very well be completely out to lunch. Let him do his job, tell you what he thinks the problem is, but make sure he's not just throwing parts at it. He's gotta find the root cause. There you go, thanks a lot for watching. Keep your stick on the ice. Hey, 30 bucks and it even comes with its own Bloatware! Woohoo!